what are we starting with? This we week? review. Uh, oh, I didn't even cut to myself. We review. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> this this one is from Apple Podcasts. Uh, oh, from, did they leave a review? Yeah, that's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> so lovely. Great, we, we love you. Quite <laughs> busy with the iPhone 12 launch, but no, always got time for the side guys. But the podcast <laughs> division, you see, it's not the phone division, so they're totally oh. free. Yeah, so it says good. I like this. <laughs> good. Yep. Good. That's Positive. it. It's five stars. Yeah. It's short and sweet. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. That's a good review. That's all you need. Thanks. It's probably our quickest review we've ever read out. You're damn right. Let's start mm. the show. Let's start the show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cupfer. Hello. This week, we are talking about changing your genes. Luke, they're dirty. Please change them. <laughs> Mine actually are dirty. I've had to take. I'm in track. I, I actually looked mine. down to check I wasn't in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, working from home, I can spend most days in my pajamas. Yeah, well, to Very be honest, true. I just don't bother putting on anything, you know, below the waist. There's no point unless you're leaving. <laughs> unless you're unless leaving anyone's your room. actually going to see you. Yeah, exactly. Unless you leave no your room, you don't need to, right? Yeah. It's just everything online is just from the waist up. Literally. In fact, most Sci Guys episodes naked from the waist down. I actually can't see, but like beyond the desk. Exactly. So no one can see. I wouldn't actually know. I bring a, wear, a, a, bring a pair of tear away boxers. <laughs> just <laughs> rip them off you quietly. Sit down, <laughs> shh, they're gone. Anyway, shall we? Shall we start the show? Again. Um, yeah. Well, no, we shouldn't. Because yeah, anything to move to, on, please. Moving on. <laughs> well, I do have something good to move on. We've got something very important to announce. Mm. Yeah. Oh, do we? we oh, do. we do. Yeah, you guys know about this. What happened recently? Definitely did. We recently hit 10,000 YouTube subscribers. Mm. Wow. I just realized that upstairs I've that. got party poppers that I should have brought down for this maybe. occasion. Yeah, but maybe. We'll use them, uh, we'll use them uh, when, we're, when we're doing our very special celebratory live stream, won't we? <gasps> yeah. A celebratory live stream? Yeah, we're doing one of those. Wow. When is it going to be, Luke? Do you know? Uh, Pop in quiz. November. <laughs> <laughs> on a Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, November 15th. Yeah, the Sunday in November. Be there on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> just one of them, okay? You got to show up to the channel every single Sunday <laughs> and just wait. It's a lucky dip, really. <laughs> no, so uh, we will be doing a, a special live stream after Sci Guys Live uh, where you can call in if you're a patron. If, if you're not a patron, you can still watch, you know, have a good time. But our patrons will be calling in and having a good time. So definitely come along for that. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can't wait to speak to the patrons again. Yeah. It was quite fun the last time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. So we actually start the show though. Yes. What yeah. are we talking about today? Something about jeans? Yeah, about jeans. Yeah. Dirty so, jeans. Look, we're talking about CRISPR. You guys remember CRISPR? Gene editing. Ah, ah. yes. We have talked about this before. <laughs> we have talked about this I think in our before. eugenics episode, I believe. Yeah, I was re-watching it a little Which, while don't back. don't ask me for the number because I've forgotten it 39 maybe no way before that's in the 20s really yeah it's like wow. 27 ish they did have eugenics in the 20s did they the 2020s <laughs> tell us it's about happening it happening now <laughs> no um it, it is it is probably happening now but uh yeah we <laughs> we did it back in our eugenics episode and i thought we'd uh, maybe circle back around and actually mm. talk about crispr because we only mm. we only just touched on it back then do you guys remember what crispr is it's a Specific. technology where you can like implant genes in your gene co in your code your gene code your dna <laughs> something like that Some in the matrix. gene editing technology <laughs> like, customizable you know character you're not, you're not far <laughs> off but what's really funny to me is you just kind of you got a bunch of science words there like i'll just sprinkle a few of them out here to see. <laughs> hacker voice i've hacked into the gene code <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no so that is that's that's yeah that's kind of basically what uh what um what's it called crispr that's basically what yeah. crispr is it's um mm. it's a, a method by which we're crispr cas9 is mm. kind of a way that we're editing genes we'll get more into that in a bit because first i think we need to talk about what genes are do you guys know what genes are the ones in the body not on the body well it depends if you eat your genes or not that's the second time we've made this don't forget already. to eat your genes <laughs> <laughs> my mom would never let me have my dessert <laughs> until i've eaten my genes <laughs> Um, yeah, so a gene is um, a unit of information uh, that, <laughs> that builds your DNA, right? No, no, it's made of DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> How to build your bricks, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if, if you think about it, uh, genes are just kind of uh, a sort of individual unit of information mm. that is used to make a protein. And it, it's one of the things that makes up your genetic code or your, your genome. Um, and it is coded by DNA. Uh, what I'm going to do today is have a quick run through of everything from sort of DNA mm. to you, how your DNA makes you. Have you guys, have you guys done this before? I mean, you've done it already, as I can see, because you're both sitting well, in front of Well, we're both sat here, yeah, yeah. looking quite different. You've done it quite well, so to be perfectly we've honest. We've had our own unique journey, <laughs> haven't we? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Go your own way. <laughs> yeah, have you, guys, have you guys maybe studied this at all before? Uh, me, absolutely not. I did like six, <laughs> six months of biology in school. And I was like, no, not for me. That's not even a full year of school. Wow. How do you manage? No, I only did six months of school. <laughs> <laughs> You did six months of school. And they in taught that, me. Yeah, they taught, they taught me uh, six months of biology in kindergarten. And I thought, no, I'm, <laughs> not, no. I'm not having this. I'm done. No. I'm out. Look, have you have you have you fared better by any chance? Uh, I honestly cannot remember. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was someone here who studied biology. <laughs> Quite literally did. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're very lucky that this isn't my you know it's very lucky that whoever chose this episode topic has actually studied this at wow. university what a big coincidence what a, what a coincidence <laughs> <laughs> no but before we get into it it's one of those things that's always baffled me uh not so much baffled me but bothered me a little bit about mm. biology where it's going on inside of me i should just know this you know yeah it's like how we don't fully understand the brain, but the brain is understanding the brain, but it doesn't understand yeah, the brain. Exactly. It doesn't like, make sense. And you have people, when you learn about cell division, you're like, it's been going on inside of me this entire time and no one told me. <laughs> That's really rude. I shouldn't, yeah. I should be aware of these things. Yeah. So now today you'll be aware of... I did it without you... my permission. <laughs> didn't even tell me what was going on. Exactly. In the dark so again. Today you'll be aware of what's actually going on inside of you right now, right this very second, every second of every oh. day until you die. Anyway, there's a uh, DNA. What is DNA? You guys know what DNA is, don't you? It's deoxyribonucleic acid. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's basically it's basically a sort of molecule uh, that is found in sort of all um, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. That's so basically sort of all bacteria and everything else mm. that isn't like a virus and things like that. Uh, that is look, this is not a great description of what prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells are, but I don't really want to get into it right now. So if there's <laughs> if there's someone that's already typing a comment like I'm actually a proca I I know okay I, I know that's such a good impression of everyone. Uh, that might be Corey's favorite comments actually by the sound of that impression. Uh, um, I love well, how you had a voice prepared as well. Fact, Brilliant. <laughs> It's just, it's really, no, it is really funny to me that sometimes people comment, like, we don't mention something in a video, I'll, I'll not, I'll not say it. And someone's like, um, actually, you, you, you don't, I know, I don't, I don't mention everything that I know. In the, the funny <laughs> thing is we don't have, um, 10 hours spare to go through the entirety of a subject, <laughs> every, every episode, you know, that would take up a lot of our week and my week editing that. Exactly. And yeah. to be honest, we go on enough tangents as it is. I really, yeah. I really can't be getting into it. So just know that DNA is the sort of building block of pretty much everything um and it, it's the it's um, actually <laughs> not of houses <laughs> well who built houses dna built houses go home oh, yeah wow <laughs> he is magic home. yeah well done i uh, am home i'm in my house it's made of bricks <laughs> but the bricks were laid by dna so like an it, egg <laughs> 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 Do you know, I, honestly, we sometimes we get like sometimes we get comments that are like, "You guys go on too many tangents. You you're too silly." And to be honest, I, I'm oh sorry. God, I read I, one. I, I totally I literally, feel you. I literally read, read one like that yesterday. Yeah, where honestly. it was like, "Please stay on topic for more than two seconds." It's really difficult. Okay, it's really hard when you're as funny as we. As we <laughs> <laughs> you like stumbled through that sentence as you realized what you were saying. You were like, <laughs> "Funny." <laughs> It was too funny. I couldn't get through it. Uh, so what DNA? Um, it basically codes for it. It codes for your genes. It's what your genes mm. are made of, and then your genes go on to make you. We'll get into how that works in just a second. So DNA is made up of nucleotides, basically sort of individual units. So as you know, your DNA is a long chain molecule, a mm. double helix. You might know it's it's basically two long strands. Yeah, it's a bit spinny. Yeah, they cross over each other. To use the what scientific terminology, it's a bit spinny. <laughs> it's a bit spinny. Yeah, um, it, it is a bit spinny. I can't deny that. Yes. So uh, the way that... The <laughs> it's a bit spinny. It is a bit. So your DNA is two strands 
um, and each strand is made up of nucleotides joined up together. Mm -hmm. And each nucleotide is made up of a sugar phosphate backbone. So that's where the that's what the ribose is, the, the deoxyribose. The deoxyribose is the sugar with a phosphate group. That's the uh, backbone. Um, and then you've also got uh, your bases. You guys might have heard of the bases before. Um, you've got uh, first base. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> a run. <laughs> you honestly, look, I'd be surprised if you've ever made it to third base. So, um, oh, <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> yeah, you're really bad at baseball. <laughs> <laughs> he always strikes out. <laughs> so your bases. You've got uh, four bases. And you're gonna listen to this because this is quite important. You've got cytosine, thymine, adenine, and guanine. Okay. Yes. C T A and G. Mm. C T A G. Right. Yes. You guys might have heard of these. Um, and basically, your genetic. So you you wonder about your genetic code. Your genetic code is basically these four bases. That's that's the entire code. Mm. Everything that is the, you know all of you. Mm. Your entire code is just four different things. That's A crazy. C T and G. Wow. Now the way that this works is because remember we said there was a double strand. So. Uh, these these bases are very particular. They can only sort of bond to one other base. So A mm. and T bond together, and C and G bond together. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that that's how that's how your code is made up uh, made up. So you've got um, uh, let's say if you've got one strand that goes um, A T G C, your other strand would go T A C G. If I said that in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> I've already forgotten. I'm I'm already be forgotten. Honest. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, basically, they're they're complementary. Is, is yeah. the key these uh, these bases, and that's how your that's how your um, DNA is made up. And someone in the comment is going to say, actually, the other strand goes the other direction, so it'd be another. I know. Let's just keep it simple, okay? <laughs> I, I'm I'm, go I'm gonna get all these um actuallys before they come out. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna get less comments now. <laughs> Yeah, so no, it's per episode. Look, when I when I call it and I'm actually, they get riled up and they get even they get even well, madder. Actually, <laughs> so you guys are good with that, right? You guys are very happy with this. Yes. extremely happy, like, very happy actually. So if I was to throw you maybe a slight curveball, you'd be totally fine with it. Mm. Oh dear, what's going to happen now? Have you guys heard of RNA? Oh yes. yeah, we have heard of that. Yeah. Oh good. Yeah. yeah. Tell me what what is RNA? <laughs> I've heard of it. it. Is, <laughs> it's a layer. As, as far as I remember, it's a layer. It's like okay. Excuse the kind of directionalness of this answer but it's like a layer on top of dna that um regulates whether D whether specific genes in the dna get expressed or not not really well that's Aww. not really the best way to that's not really the best way to describe it. I'll, I'll go through i, I think I, I think i get I, I think i understand where you're coming from with that and let, let's just talk about rna from the start okay so rna stands for ribonucleic acid does that sound a little a little bit similar to you it's, yeah, yeah, deoxy so, deoxyribonucleic acid. Oh, so it's missing the deoxy. It's that it's it's got an oxygen. Where's it? Lo it's lost it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Where'd you put your deoxy? Deoxy means without sort of without the oxygen. Oh, uh, so so, there's, so there's, it has there's oxygen. Without, there's right. well, there, I think is I think it's an OH group on um uh right what's it called? There's an OH group on RNA that is not present um, oh. on DNA. Hence deoxy oh. and ribonucleic acid. I think RNA was discovered first, and that's why it's ribonucleic acid and uh, not oxyribonucleic acid. Uh, yeah, and it seems weird that they specified the one without it. Yeah, well, I think I don't know. I, I that's what my that's what my, my bio, bio uh, that's what my biology teacher told me when I was in high school. So right. don't take that for a fact. I don't know that at all. <laughs> I'm just, like, this is based on what I think. I guess what Mister Roger said. Hope you're listening, Mister Roger. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Mister Roger. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, RNA, ribonucleic acid. Uh, it's really similar to DNA um, in that it 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 also uh, it's it's usually single stranded. It basically is single stranded, um, and it it also has um, bases. So it's got the sugar backbone and the bases, uh, yeah. the same as the same as DNA. But there's a slight difference okay. with the bases because you still have your adenine, you still have your guanine, you still have your cytosine, but you've also got uracil instead of thymine. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. So instead of... <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good effort at looking like you had a clue what was going on there, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a uh, kerfuffle. You know what? I'm uh. following. So with, with RNA, instead of um, A-T-C-G, you've got A-U-C-G. That's not mm -hmm. the U. What? I don't know why I imagine it beginning with an E. 
You're was Excel. It? Oh, you. <laughs> I was in like no, European so- Union. <laughs> 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 I was so confused. I was like, I didn't start anything with no Eurocell. Starts with a U. Eurocell. Yeah, okay. U R A C. Imagine it. I can picture the word. Do you want yeah. me to show you the word? I've got it written oh, down. Oh, please, if you've yeah, got it there. Um, <laughs> I'm a visual learner, as we all know. Uracil. Is it highlighted? Oh. No, yeah. Uracil. Whoa. I'm not a sil, you're a sil. Wow, that's very rude. <laughs> I wouldn't say that to any uh, molecular biologist. They would be very <laughs> cross. <laughs> Your mum's a sil. So, there are different types of RNA. Um, you've got, um, we're not going to go exactly into what they are. <laughs> just caught look yawning there am i boring you am i boring you sir you're not boring me i just don't really know what's going on <laughs> honestly <laughs> me neither oh, you really okay so we've we've spoken about dna no and mm-hmm. we're fr- so we've, we've done dna we've got dna we've, we've done that yeah we're on rna now we're on rna which is similar to dna yes except mm-hmm. there's different bases well three of them are the same yeah one of them is different yes Thi- thymine is yeah. swapped out for uracil Yes. There you go. Look at you, I'm basically a biologist. Also, bear in mind that RNA is generally a single strand. Yes. Whereas instead of the double yeah. spinny. That's it. Double helix. The double spinny. The double spinny. <laughs> Watson and Crick are rolling in their graves. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think they're still alive. So, oh. I, I mean, <laughs> so as I said, there are different types of RNA. We're not going to get strictly into um, the, you know, the sort of function of, functions of them in particular in great detail because you could study a lot on this. Mm. These are very complex topics and I'm, I'm trying to simplify them as much as possible. Okay, mm. so let's just breeze through this. You've got a messenger RNA, mRNA, um, transfer RNA, tRNA, um, and ribosomal RNA, rRNA. Uh, those are present in basically all organisms. Now, bear in mind that um, these are not the only types of RNA, uh, but these are the three main types. Okay? I'll run through yes. those again. Messenger RNA, that's mRNA. Yeah. Transfer RNA. That's tRNA. Yeah. And ribosomal RNA. RNA. RRNA. That's a good joke there. What's a pirate's favorite? Yeah, okay, let me go. RNA, <laughs> 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 mate. <laughs> <laughs> so during protein synthesis, which is, you know, when your proteins are being made, mRNA carries the genetic codes from the DNA in, um, in the nucleus to the ribosomes, okay? Mm. And the ribosomes are basically where your proteins get made um, in, in your cells. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, is that making sense to you guys? So in, there's different parts of your cells. So let's just talk about two main parts. You've got the nucleus mm-hmm. and the cytoplasm. Right? The nucleus is basically where all your DNA is, and the cytoplasm is where everything else is. Good. It's, the, it's just Every, the, everything that's not the nucleus. Well, yeah, okay. Very simply put, the cytoplasm is where everything like everything else is, all your other stuff is. The nucleus is where it's you like keep your, your torso. Teeth. No. no. Yes. So the nucleus is like the egg yolk. Well, that's where I keep all my other stuff. Yes, okay, if you think about it, yes. The nucleus okay. is like the egg yolk, and the egg <laughs> white holds everything else. Yes. And the egg white is the the cytoplasm. Yeah, okay. Think about it like that. Think about it like an egg where the yolk is where your DNA is. (laughs) And the cytoplasm is the albumin, the white bit. I'm following now, yeah. (laughs) Thank you for bringing this uh, science into this world, Jim. Thank you. People say I should be a science teacher and I'm sitting here like, (laughs) I don't think I could hack it, man. (laughs) I think you and Jim could be one science teacher together. (laughs) You can (laughs) say things and I'll be like, well, it's like when you have an egg. <laughs> Jamp is like the uh, the sign language person on the side, well, like an interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like for the students that aren't quite, you know, a students, you've got you've got Jamp there to do, you know, do the. Like, the oh, by the way, DNA is the double spinny. Yeah. Double spinny. Double spinny. <laughs> you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't write that on your test. You won't pass. So um, the ribosome um, is made of R RNA, ribosomal mm-hmm. RNA, and proteins. So basically, you don't need to worry uh, too much about the ribosomes. Uh, We're not going to get into exactly how they're how they're structured and all that stuff. We're just okay. going to say that the ribosomes are basically where uh, your your sort of genetic code is mm-hmm. turned into proteins. Right. Yeah. So those sit in your genetic code is turned ah. into proteins. Yeah. Oh, it's so it's used. It's used. Proteins. It's sorry. It's used to make proteins rather than right. It's not okay. specifically turned into proteins. So what happens is, uh, we'll, we'll get into what happens in just a second. Um, and then, um, as I've said, there's mRNA, rRNA, and then there is tRNA, uh, which is uh, you know a, a different type of RNA, um, but they bring amino acids to the ribosomes where they form proteins. So. If that doesn't make much sense to you, don't worry, we're going to get into it right now. I'm going to tell you exactly how DNA becomes a protein. 
Because bear in mind, your genetic code makes proteins, which make you, basically. So you've got your DNA, which basically stores the code. It's your genetic information, right? It's kind of like a memory bank. And then what happens is uh, you you can split you split that part. You can mm. um, you get RNA, which um, matches your DNA code, right? It's made to match the DNA code, um, and that's that's really important, obviously, because that's the code that makes your protein. So the mm. RNA um, is then moved from the nucleus into the ribosomes, which are basically in the cytoplasm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens in the ribosome is the RNA is matched up to amino acids which are the building blocks of proteins. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then those amino acids are joined together into a long chain, which is a protein. It's, it's very straightforward. Right. And so the RNA isn't used up, and the DNA isn't used up, but um, basically what happens is three, each like sort of three bases of mm. RNA correspond, it's like a kind of code, and that corresponds, that's called a codon, that mm. corresponds to an amino acid. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, you've got, let's say, let's say you've got AGT, this is this is not correct because I have not learned these because <laughs> in my life I do not need to know them. Know them. Someone will know and will correct me. But please let's, uh, leave it in the comments. We'll give you permission this time. You can you can do it. So let's okay. Let's. I've got my book upstairs which actually has the codons which correspond. <laughs> to that, but we're not getting into that. So let's say you've got ACG, right? Yeah. ACG. Let's say that corresponds to uh, phenylalanine, which is an amino acid, mm -hmm. right? And you've got another, you've got another um, set of three. So like C A G, right? That'll correspond to a different amino acid, mm -hmm. and and so on. So basically, how this works is you've got your RNA, which goes into the ribosome, which then um, the ribosome basically is like, ah, these three bases, cool. I'll grab myself a phenylalanine. Oh, <laughs> these three bases, I'll grab myself a different amino acid. Join those together, and another three bases. This is that amino acid. Pop it on the end, and that's basically how that's basically how proteins are made. It's like you, your genetic code yeah. is basically filed through um, uh, in RNA in the form of RNA is filed through a ribosome, which just gets all the amino acids and is like, yep, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and boom, it's out. It's the, your <laughs> your amino acid chain is then out of the ribosome, at which point it spontaneously folds into the correct shape. Now, this is really important because remember, protein. Uh, we've mentioned this before. Protein function. Yeah. It's determined by the structure. And the structure is basically determined by the the order of the amino acids. Right. Yeah. So um, it, it, it basically it comes out of the ribosome and the amino, amino acids roll in a, long, in a long chain and then they spontaneously just fold into the right shape of the protein. The protein is then a functional protein. Boom, it's on its way. That's how proteins <sighs> are made in your body. And that's why DNA is important. So your DNA is like sort of the memory and the RNA um, is like uh, like all. It, it's basically made to match the DNA, mm. and then it's it's made uh, is used to make proteins. Magic, right? Yeah, and we just do that. It's it's happening right now. Wow. Yeah. Out of interest, yeah. um, uh, this might be a sort of like a little bit of a um, <coughs> very specific point. But so when Champ says, and we just do that, yes. Um, is I, I'm assuming that what this is is that this is basically a mechanical process that happens just because it happens. <clears throat> um, it's one of these weird things where because we are people existing in the in the world where we have intentions and uh, we or at least we feel like we have intentions, we feel like we carry out decisions and then make things happen in the world. But on the smaller scale, things just sort of mechanically happen. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, and so this yeah. is this isn't being done by anything. This is just what happens when you have the correct ingredients and and, and the correct DNA all in the right order. This is just what happens. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And this is the thing. It's so it's so interesting because it's it's fairly it's very complex. It's very complex, obviously, mm. uh, but it's not complicated. If that makes sense, it's a very complex no, no, system, sure. but it's incredibly straightforward. In fact. Uh, explaining it to you guys, I, I I want it to be clear that this is this is not a difficult thing to wrap your head yeah, around. Yeah. And if if you're finding it really difficult to sort of wrap your head around it, then I've not done my job properly. And definitely leave a comment down below, and we'll see if we can work it out. But uh, it's it's a very straightforward process. 
uh, it's it's and, literally like like cooking. It's like you have these three codes, and then you go right, get me that ingredient. That's yeah, that it, ingredient. It's like following the next ingredient. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is this is a this is probably an entire episode topic on its own. But just to briefly touch on it, it's the kind selfish of selfish gene stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like the idea of like how sort of the uh, how how things evolve. So you've got mm. at the very simplest simplest sense mm. what life is is kind of information that kind of uh, i guess uh continues itself mm. that yeah. um, replicates itself so if you've got mm. these these very simple base molecules that um suddenly start being able to sort of well i say suddenly that um through biology uh, through chemical processes um start to be able to replicate themselves mm. then that you can you can understand how it sort of that can grow into what we have uh, as what we see as life so uh, a virus which basically uses um a virus uses your own uh, a virus is actually really interesting because a virus what it does is it uses your apparatus to replicate itself oh. and we've spoken about this before and it's probably going to be much more much easier to understand now that yeah. i've kind of explained the process but yeah. like what a virus does is it will use all of this all of the like, it's, it's like okay I've got a factory that makes, um, I don't know. let's say I've got a factory that makes hats, right? A virus. <laughs> well, it's yeah, you. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> that is true. Buy my yeah. hats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will send them to you from my factory. <laughs> it's like, so um, my factory that built that makes hats, that's, that's me. That, that's my cell. Okay. And mm. a virus is basically someone that walks in and says, you know, I've actually got my own hat designs. I could just... <laughs> Yeah, I'll just slip them into this factory <laughs> and they'll make them for me and boom. Yeah. And that's what a virus does. It walks into your factory, slips in its own designs, <sighs> slips in its own genetic code and tricks your body into making it, making it, um, like, you know, producing it's it. So rude. Yeah, it's very rude. But when you understand this, it makes everything so much more interesting. Yeah. And what you're talking about, look there, about the sort of uh, how this is just sort of mechanical processes. That's kind mm. of biochemistry because... It's what we were talking about before, where if you, you go to really complex, you, like you get more and more sort of, I guess, complex um, or sort of more interactions building on each other. Um, you can start off with, say, sort of physics, uh, which uh, you can easily understand how physics transforms into chemistry. Chemistry is basically just kind of, uh, it, it's just physics, but with chemicals, really, mm. you know? Um, and then biology is just really really complex it's there's a lot of chemistry okay yeah, it's that's complex true. chemistry that's true um in so many in so many layers and so many different interacting reactions and so and all of these things building um in, in very in like varying layers of complexity to make sort of what we call life and that's why we study it as biology because mm. fundamentally biology is just it, it's chemistry when you break it down, like that's why that's why, so I did biotechnology at university, which is really mm. similar to biochemistry. So we had fundamentally basically the same course. I just had a few classes on how to make bacteria make stuff for you, um, <laughs> <laughs> like capitalism at its core, making which bacteria. Cool. Do. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's pretty cool. Um, hey, we're like the virus. Work. Yeah, well, that's so bad. Well, we're going right. You, I see you, bacteria. I see what you want to make. Make this thing instead for me. That's literally. That's literally what we do. That's actually what yeah. we do, and um, it, it's just like the viruses. Well, yeah, it, okay. and we're using we we kind of learned uh, from viruses as well, I suppose. To but I suppose we also feed into... we feed them we feed them. So well, okay, um, so can't complain. We can feed I? the we feed the the little um, little the biology are, boys in, the bacteria in our, <laughs> little <laughs> biology boys. <laughs> <laughs> right, if we if we ever do merch, that's going on it, right? That's like uh, someone write that down. Boys. Boys. This is a spin-off from Psy Guys. The bio biology boys. boys. Oh, no. No, <laughs> uh, that is that is kind of how DNA becomes protein. Now I just want to quickly say uh, this is this is great. So I said there were amino acids, right? There are twenty amino acids in mammals. Uh, but we find over three hundred amino acids sort of in nature, I think. But in sort of mammals there are twenty. Yeah. If you speak to I think I think doctors, yeah. Doctors will um or medical students will probably be able to list you um, all 20, I think. Uh, people that have studied biochemistry, uh, I think higher than um, university level, will be able to tell you all 20. And also the codes for them, because there are, there are oh, two goodness. different types of, there are two different codes um, for, you've got like a, a single letter code, and I think a three letter code, and then you've got the full name for oh, amino acids. And goodness. There, are, there are plenty of people who just know those. I don't because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine. And I was looking, I was doing the research today and I'm like, 
I'm just going to learn these just because it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've genuinely just forgotten, but uh, people that study sort of biochemistry uh, and things like that will we'll just know them. All so them. when you say, how many are there? Sorry, you said? So in, so in people, in, so in mammals, yeah. there are 20. Mm. Okay. And, oh, and you, how many are there in total? Uh, w- there are, there are over three. We found <laughs> over 300. So this is the thing about uh, amino acids. You guys might know about some already. If you work out, um, you probably have heard about leucine. Leucine? No. no? no. Uh, well, I said if you work is out. Is creatine one? Don't know uh, no. Oh, is tryptophan one? Yes. Hey, I know something. I, I, I'm really <laughs> worried about tripping up on camera. I know I know this, but it's it's one of those things. If I mishear or misspeak and make the mm. littlest mistake, I'm going to look so very silly. But yeah, you've got um, phenylalanine, which is, uh, you might have heard of phenylalanine. There's a disorder where people um, can't, they, they can't have phenylalanine in their diet, which means they need to avoid oh. a number of foods. So- uh, oh. So there, do you know you, you might have heard of essential amino acids, right? Mm-hmm. So those are the ones that you can't produce in your body, and the reason you need them is because if you don't have them, you can't make the proteins that you need to make with those amino, amino acids. Ah, which is why we eat. Nom nom nom. Well, it's one of the reasons that we eat. <laughs> we eat for a number of reasons, but yes. Um, oh, cysteine. You guys know about you guys know about cysteine. This, we spoke the about, chapel. No. Wow. No. That's amazing. There's also trans. Um, cysteine. It, so cysteine is one of the reasons that you've got that people who have curly hair have curly hair. Cysteine is an amino ah. acid which uh, creates sulfur bonds, which is part of the reason that my hair is quite curly. Ah. If you look into what amino acids are, have a like have a look for a list of the amino acids. You might have actually heard of some of them already because they are very very important. And th- to be honest, when you realize what they are, it's actually very very simple. Ah. They're just little building blocks that make proteins. Obviously. Bear in mind, proteins can be very long and have quite a number of amino acids in them. Yeah. So it's it's it, you can't just say look at a look at a, a list of amino acids in a certain order and be like, I know I know exactly what function that protein's going to have. <laughs> you can probably infer some like sort of ideas of structure. Yeah. But it's it's you know it's it's the kind of thing where you need quite powerful computers to. Um, oh. Well, to f- I've got a Mac. Is that good? Mm. No. <laughs> uh, you, uh, but you from so to find sort of <laughs> to, <laughs> but we use we use quite powerful computers to study this in fact uh, i think my uh, my personal tutor um at university uh christina rango uh does uh sort of bio i think it's bioinformatics uh she she works with sort of uh, basically mm. computers and proteins and genes and it's it's all very interesting work which you know we might do an episode on at some point oh. yeah yeah so uh <laughs> we've, we've done genes we know how sort of DNA becomes proteins, right? And we know mm. why that's important because proteins are you. What we need. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, proteins aren't what you proteins aren't what you need. Proteins are like you know enzymes. What are you proteins. are. They're what you are. Ah. So the the reason you need to eat protein. Oh, that's it. So the reason <laughs> this is the thing. The reason you need to eat protein. So most people will hear protein and think ah food. The reason you need to eat protein is because it's got the amino acids that you can't your body can't produce. So it. When you eat protein, that's to make your own proteins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you we can't eat ourselves. You can eat yourselves, but it's pointless. We won't get the right ones. Well, n- no. You, <laughs> you, no. No. You're no, wasting energy eating yourself than you get <laughs> from eating yourself. Because they're already there. You want... you. <laughs> <laughs> we need new ones to replace it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you eat yourself, there's no point. You don't need to replace it. <laughs> right. Imagine, oh, sh- I've got a flat tire. I'll take, I'll take it off, and I'll put the Let same one put back one on my, again. My on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's why you shouldn't eat yourself. Problem. <laughs> <laughs> no other reason other than that one. Um, <laughs> so, shall we move on to CRISPR? That's what we were talking about today. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I do. Cool. Crispy. Do guys, no. Do you know what CRISPR? stands for crisper cream no <laughs> you are, you are gonna have to have a time out at some I'm point I'm, I'm i'll mute myself <laughs> <laughs> crisper uh, you guys might know what it stands for um, if you can even get one word I'll, I'll i'll give you an honorary point um does the r stand for ribonucleic no no so mm. crisper stands for Clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. I, was, I just was about to say that, Corey, and you oh, interrupted me. I'm so sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry. So you might have heard of CRISPR-Cas9. Cas9 um, is a protein. So uh, Cas9 just means CRISPR-associated. 
So it's it's the CRISPR associated no. protein. Um, now, CRISPR Cas9 w- <laughs> is let's call it a technology. It was discovered in 2012 by um, Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier, both uh, women, which is um, really you know something you should pay attention to. So uh, yeah, uh, clustered regularly into space, short palindromic repeats. Basically, uh, what CRISPR uh, Cas9 is. It's, well, sorry, Cas9, by the way, is uh, a protein that kind of, it's an enzyme that cuts DNA. Okay? Okay. So uh, wh- where it was kind of discovered, where it comes from is the sort of immune system of bacteria and something called archaea. You don't need to worry about that. But basically it comes from the immune system of sort of uh, bacteria, essentially. Uh, now, how this works in situ, sort of in bacteria, is let's say a bacteriophage, which is kind of like a virus for bacteria, a uh, bacteriophage um, infects a bacteria, right? Uh, what the what the bacteria does is it can uh, if it if it doesn't die, it can save a part of the uh, virus's sort of genetic code and put it in this. It put it into CRISPR, mm. and CRISPR is effectively like sort of it's this part of DNA where you've got like sort of palindromic repeats. You know what a palindrome is? It's the same forwards as backwards. As yes. Backwards. It's it's this area of DNA where you've got sort of repeats uh, repeats in DNA. Um, and with little sort of spacers in between them. And those spacers are made up of, if I'm not mistaken, uh, those mistake, th- those uh, those spacers <laughs> are made up from uh, sort of the genetic information of viruses that have infected the bacteria, basically. Why do they want to, well, want, well, but why, why is it beneficial for them to keep the virus's be- um, DNA? Well, I'll, I'll tell you for why, Luke. So, Please do. Uh, when, is it like a memory? Yes, it, it's kind of like a little <sighs> sort of, it is a little sort of memory bank. So little piece of trauma. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Remember that horrible time when I got, yeah, yeah. The bacteria says to itself without a mouth, yes. a brain <laughs> or an anus. Well, that's why it makes ponders. us so it can say it to itself. Okay. Remember that time that was bad? I remember too. <laughs> I got it in my CRISPR. <laughs> so what happens is now that none of the bacteria has got that stored, whenever, you know, whenever uh, it's sort of a virus the bacteria is infected by a virus again it can just let loose um it's sort of cast nine thing mm. which um well basically it will try and it will try and read um to it'll try and find dna that is the same as the saved dna right so or, or genetic information it'll try and find genetic codes that are the same as the saved genetic code so when it finds those it just cuts them up and if you cut up something's genetic code it can't do its it can't really do its work you know what I mean? Because I remember, as we said, uh, your genetic code codes for proteins. And if you've only got half of the code, you've only got half of the protein. And if you've got half the protein, you don't have a protein at all. Because ah. it, the, bear in mind, the structure, the, the function of proteins is very is is dependent on the structure. And the structure is dependent on the code that is used to make it. So if you cut that code in half, you don't have the same structure anymore. Yeah. So maybe I've misunderstood this, but it sounds like you're saying that... Um, so a bacteria gets infected by um, whatever that thing was called, a virus for bacteria. Yes, bacteriophage. Um, bacteriophage. And then it remembers, and then it sounded like, which I know it, 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 it this won't be, what, but it sounds like the bacteria then goes on a kind of vigilante mission to snip up all the copies of that that it can find because it, it's angry. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> this only this isn't outside of the bacteria. This is all happening within the bacteria. Oh right! I thought you were like, I remember that, and now good doing some soul searching. Sorry, Sorry, no, He's on a in, mission. Doing some soul searching. Might meditate. Looking right. Is right. this all? This is almost like a really basic um, immune system. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's. I think that's what I said. Yeah, like it's it's basically uh, the bacterial immune system, uh, and it's granted it's not brilliant, it's imperfect, yeah. but it. Does I mean bacteria are still about, so it must be doing so all yeah, it snips. It snips all effective. the copies of that bacteria. And I'm guessing mm-hmm. this so is not, how not we not the then... bacteria. It doesn't snip the Sorry, the, the, the bacteriophage. Yeah. All the copies of that DNA, it goes and snips it. Yeah, it, it, I don't think it is necessarily it's, snip. I don't think it's necessarily snip. DNA. It could be RNA as well. Snip. It it, it it cuts the genetic it cuts the genetic snip. information. Yeah, it mm-hmm. snips. Snip. Doesn't it snip? So just to just to re recap what, what's going on here, bear in mind CRISPR is basically kind of a proto-immune system for mm. bacteria. What happens is bacteria gets infected with a sort of virus, essentially. Mm-hmm. And um, the, when, if, if it doesn't sort of die, it saves the virus DNA and it stores it in the sort of CRISPR region 
of its of its genome. Now that region um, has got sort of repeated bits of DNA, mm -hmm. sort of repeated bits of genetic code uh, with spacers in between. And those spacers are made up of virus DNA that the bacteria has saved. So it's like it's a little, little virus memory bank. Oh. Okay? So if the virus, if the, if the bacteria is then infected again by that virus, all it needs to do is just take, uh, take that sort of virus DNA that it's got saved. Yeah. And yeah. Pop it into its sort of a CRISPR Cas9, um, Cas9 thing. Bear in mind the Cas9 is the protein. It's the enzyme that that goes snip, snip, snip. The snipper. Yeah. Now, what's really interesting about Cas9 is effectively you can sort of with with the DNA that the with the with the virus DNA, it's sort of given to the Cas9, and the Cas9 will only snip that DNA. <gasps> Oh, I figured out where this is going. This is so yeah. exciting. So, so basically, what it is, it's kind of like it it loads. So, if you think about it this way, uh, the virus sort of, if if you, if you think about it this way, the bacteria sort of takes the the virus DNA and it loads it into Cas9, and Cas9 is like, right, I am only going to snip up this exact code, right? And so it goes on. It's like on a mission. It's any piece of sort of um, genetic information that it encounters. Um, it tests it. It basically so it's got it's it's got it's like sort of wanted sign. It's like I was just you, thinking it's a bit. Are like you a this? <laughs> no, you're not this. Go away. It's a bit are like when this? the when the bouncer at the bar, you know, has like yeah, a picture. Exactly. Like, Don't that. let this person in. <laughs> Except if the bouncer cut you in half. Yeah. 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 Snip. Yeah. So <laughs> a, bit of a brutal um, bar. So yeah. in that way, uh, you can understand why that protects bacteria because if the viral because the way that viruses work is they shoot their genetic information inside of you, um, and they use your sort of apparatus oh to not like that, Luke. They shoot their genetic information. I was going to say, that's what, that's what males do as well. <laughs> right. They, so they put their genetic information inside of you and use your apparatus to make... Oh, no. Oh, that is, dear. No, but... Um, to make a baby. Men are the virus. But vi <laughs> viruses uh, will not... Venus. Viruses won't... Sh like, you know, the difference is that when, uh, when people do it, they tend to, you know, use both of their DNA. So they make Corey's hats, but they also make the other hat. Well, no, what <laughs> they do is they cut the hats in half and they stitch them and they stitch them together to make <laughs> half Corey's hat. Half Nobody's half buying those hat. hats, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, they're not. This is such a thing. No, so uh, <laughs> bear in mind that a virus is basically just a piece of genetic information that uses your apparatus to replicate. Mm. And if you're finding all that genetic information and cutting it up, giving it a snip, then it can't make it, it can't, you know, replicate because it's not complete so that's how it works in bacteria you guys you guys got that Is that made mm -hmm. sense to you? there are there, there are sort of like there are some other things that i'll go into just to just you know for the sake of it um to be more sort of specific but that's the general sort of sense if you want a general overview of how crispr cas9 works that's how it works in bacteria basically it you load in some dna and the Cas9 goes looking for that DNA and snips it up. Yes, Luke. I have a question, Professor Corey. So, what is Cas9? If it's inside of a bacteria, mm -hmm. what is it? It's an enzyme. It's an enzyme. It's a protein. I'm going to pretend I know what that is. You don't know what an enzyme? Great. Wait, you don't, oh, dear. I know what no, it is so in sorry. relation to other things, but I don't <laughs> like. I can't picture that. I can't like. This is no. It's, it's, it, in my mind, it's like a little little guy with a pair of scissors. Okay, like, this is <laughs> this is the, this is what's really difficult when you study sort of biology for your entire yeah. life. I don't know at what point I learned what an enzyme is. <laughs> no, no, I, I definitely will have learned what an enzyme no, 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 is. No. It just, I, it's just unhelpful. Uh, Ten years on. <laughs> oh, no, un understandable. But the, the, the point is that yeah. I, so I'm so uh, when 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 you've been studying something for your whole life, and I don't really teach anyone some except for you just, guys some things are just a given yeah i'm just like in the field, yeah. I, I don't know what is a given and what isn't necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. you know mm, so mm. an enzyme is effectively just a protein that uh that sort of i guess speeds up a, a reaction or yes. causes a re mm. can basically cause a reaction to happen yeah and that's what we use to digest food is it yeah we can no? use we use yeah. enzymes to digest food you, you probably use enzymes in you can use enzymes in your um washing up liquid to break down, ah, uh, to break yeah, down like that. yeah. You can use how does that? So, how does an enzyme cause the the snip? This is this is kind of a little bit more complex, but effectively, there are different ways that some enzymes. There are different ways that enzymes work, uh, but what this what an enzyme does is basically give things the give give things the energy they need to have a certain <gasps> reaction happen. Mm -hmm, but, or mm -hmm. not necessarily give them the energy, but it could be it could be kind of make put them in the position where mm. the activation energy, the energy you need to put in to react put in for a reaction to happen, is lowered. Right. Yep. So that's basically. I mean, I don't know specifically 
how Cas9 does the snip. I don't know the exact sort of biochemistry of it because I didn't think that you would ask that question. To be perfectly honest, Sorry. Um, no, no, no. That's that's a, it's a <laughs> good, stop asking questions. It's a very good question. <laughs> I I am just underprepared for it. So good job. Um, no, yeah. So it, it basically Cas9 is a sort of enzyme. It's a protein. Mm. Um, it's basically a chain of amino acids that have gone into a shape that makes it very good at chopping specific parts of DNA. Yeah. Now you might be thinking, now if Cas9 uh, cuts, can cut DNA, um, and it only cuts the specific DNA, why doesn't it cut the the, the sort of CRISPR DNA? You know, the as in the the viral DNA that's in the sort of CRISPR um, area. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, because if it's only looking for that, well, the thing is that there's these, um, there are these sort of DNA sequences called um, PAMs, protospacer adjacent motifs, um, and those basically sit next to the target DNA sequence. And if Cas9 doesn't basically doesn't have a, uh, if it doesn't, if you can't see a PAM mm. next to the target DNA, it won't cut it. But what aren't rib ribosomes? Yeah, is that? Are they not going to then evolve to have PAMs? Why? Why would it have? So they don't get snipped. Ribosomes wouldn't. So it wouldn't be ribosomes that would be doing that. It would be the bacteria. Sorry, what? The bacteriophage. Bacteriophage. Gene. Sorry, yes. Sorry, I'm getting so many things. Uh, the bacteriophage. Are they going to evolve to have PAMs? So they. I mean, it could be something that. It, it, that's a, the thing is a PAM is probably quite complex. So, evolving that is probably not. It's, it could happen. I'm not saying it could. I'm quite complex, to be fair, and I've <laughs> evolved. So, well, yeah, uh, I'm more okay. I'm more complex than a than a Pam. So this is the thing. What's what's really interesting? It sounds like a Karen. Hey, I know a Pam. Like, like, what's, really, <laughs> what's, what's really really interesting? What is very interesting is what you're what you're doing here is you're looking at evolution as a sort of. Um, well, this would be a really smart smart way to solve this problem, and. <laughs> I, I love when people do that because you're giving evolution a lot of credit there. Evolution, just, <laughs> like, it just, it's just like messing up for millions of years and eventually something doesn't mess up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, okay, so you could you could be thinking about CRISPR Cas9, yeah. um, the CRISPR Cas9 complex as a as a very smart thing that bacteria have done in order to stop um, in order to stop viruses. When in actuality, probably what happened is some viral DNA got into a bacteria a, bacter a bacteria and it stuck there. And the bacteria had some sort of off enzyme that just started snipping specific parts of DNA. And that became beneficial because it stopped them from getting killed by viruses. And that those those mistakes over time ended up being this very robust CRISPR-Cas9 complex. Mm. They probably started as, whoops, I'm just cutting up DNA here. Oh, no. Until, you know. It's interesting. You, the way you're saying this is um, there's a really good explanation of um, how bacteria... Um, gain an ability mm -hmm. in Corey's episode of our new series, Psy Guys Why, uh, which is why do bacteria, um, why do bacteria, become why, is it, why do bacteria to, become resistant, become resistant to, anti to antibiotics? And it's a really good, very simple explanation of how bacteria sort of gain abilities. <laughs> so go check that out. Yeah, definitely go check that mm. out. Check out that new series. And if you want to see things like that early, you know, a uh, new series that we're dropping, head over to patreon.com forward slash sly guys and join up yeah. there. Yeah. Get some early access. Oh, quick, quick, yeah. quick little ad there. Love that. <laughs> uh, no, so yeah, I, I really, I really, I really love it when um, when people give evolution more credit than they should because we we are we do sometimes you just got to knock evolution down a peg. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Well, you should because we're taught in, you're nothing. <laughs> I mean, we're, except you are everything, yeah. but also you're nothing. <laughs> we're taught in school about evolution being this uh, sort of majestic, um, incredible process that happens. But it's more kind of like the way I view it, at least, is failing upwards. You know, so, <laughs> you, you know that person that really should have been fired, but somehow suffering from success. Yes, yeah. yes. Somehow they're just they're on their way to being the head of the company. That is evolution. Okay, that's what evolution is doing. Yes. It's messing up, and sometimes it works. Really, like the biggest faking it till you make it. Yeah, scenario, you, look, you, know? you throw enough <laughs> organisms at the wall. Uh, some of them are going to have to stick at some point. <laughs> uh, trust me, they throw a lot of them. Only like... a small amount of them, relatively. But, yeah. you know. Well, if you think about all the extinct species and all the extant species, mm. there are probably a lot more extinct. But then, obviously, what does extinct mean? Because um, what if it evolved into something else? Let's not get into that. We've probably got another episode somewhere about that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've, we've talked about how CRISPR-Cas9 works and how um, basically 
Cas9, if it doesn't see a PAM next to its target DNA sequence, it won't cut it. Um, but yeah, essentially, that is how CRISPR-Cas9 works. Um, and that's fairly straightforward. Um, I'll just tell you about how we've adapted it, uh, and, and, and really simply how we've adapted it um, you know, to do what we want. So you mm. can see already how this is how this is could be potentially used for our own benefit. Now, what what CRISPR Cas9 does, it takes a sort of target, it needs sort of the target uh, DNA, it needs mm. to be given that. Um, and then it basically just goes on a a one enzyme mission to chop up that DNA. Yeah. So basically you've got uh you've got what, what you can do now is because um what people have basically done uh, is they've they fused. There, there's different parts of there's different parts of the CRISPR Cas9. There, there's I'll just quickly talk about it. There's uh, the crRNA, which is the uh, I think it's the CRISPR RNA, and then there's the uh, there is the what is it called the tracr RNA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. I'm following. Which is, yeah. Oh, yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> which Come is, on. Keep up. I think the. Uh, Trans, uh, trans, uh, transformational CRISPR RNA or the CRISPR transforming RNA. Um, I can't quite remember the name of it's it. It's going to be my guess, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the names of them don't really matter. You can um, have a look in the you can have a look in the, the um, references in the in the, in the description below <laughs> uh, if you want to know specifically what those names are. But uh, there's the the CR RNA and the TRA CR RNA. Um, mm. effectively those, <laughs> yes, <laughs> those are important for basically directing the CRISPR, uh, Cas9 complex to chop up whatever it needs to chop up. So what people have done, um, what scientists have done is actually, um, m- have, uh, like kind of fused the crRNA and the tra crRNA to make a guide RNA. So when you, if you want to edit genomes now, all you need is two things, a guide RNA and the Cas9 protein. Oh. So essentially what you need, to, does that make sense? Yeah. The guide, so the guide <laughs> RNA is basically, the, is, it's not exactly, but it's basically the, 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 like a kind of copy of the DNA that you yeah. want to cut or a copy of the area that you want to cut. So you've got a 20, you basically have a 20 um, base pair long sort of sequence that yeah. you make up. Um, that you that then Cas9 can use and it just scans all the DNA for that sequence mm. and it'll cut it when it finds it. It's very clever. It's very, very clever. But here's the important part. So as I've said, it's about 20, it's about 20 base pair uh, long sequence you need. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's, that's, that's really, really important. This 20 base pair long sequence needs to be unique. You think about it. It needs to only be present uh, in the gene that you want to cut because if it's present anywhere else, oh, that protein is going to cut that too. If it's present in you, yeah. Well, but is, uh, is, is it is, is it, it like, like um, so? Imagine you're wanting to check, like uh, where we're eventually getting is to changing a gene for a specific illness or some mm. gene in you that okay. you want to change. Yeah. So um, if if that same twenty letter sequence is also present in the thing that encodes your eye color oh dear. it's going to snip it twice yeah. it's going to snip both so, of them yeah if you've got if let's say you're looking to target one you're looking to target one specific gene which is why cas9 is oh so beautiful in that you can be very specific in what you target yeah let's say you want to do that you, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to find uh you're gonna have to find a part of that a sequence of that gene that sort of 20 base pair long sequence of that a sequence in that gene that is unique to that gene basically mm. so that you're not um you're not cutting up anything else that you don't that you want to be mm. You don't want to be you don't want to be chopping up bits that are um, very common because yeah. then you'll just be destroying uh, your genome. Now, yeah. not a good idea. This is not the entire story. You might mm. be sitting there thinking, "Okay, cool. Well, Corey, you've told me how Cas9 can chop up the DNA, but then you've just got a chopped up bit of DNA. What are you doing yes. with that?" Uh, that's what you're thinking, right? Gonna cook it. Yeah, no. I actually was thinking that. I'm not actually joking. I was. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you were. Why would you cook it? Don't, don't, don't. Put it in a stew or something. No, don't say Should that. You've chopped it. <laughs> Why would you cook it? Coming from the man who self-confessed wants to eat human flesh. <laughs> yes, I absolutely do, and I'm not embarrassed about it. You cannot <laughs> silence me, and you cannot oppress me for my cannibalistic tendencies. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just <laughs> pointing out the slight bit of hypocrisy there. Well, Why would you cook look, a small part of 20, 20 letters of genome? Says the man honestly, who wants Luke, to cook right now, a whole right now, person. You're being a little cannibalist. And, <laughs> <laughs> a cannibalist? Yeah, you're being a little cannibalist. 
<laughs> okay. At least I'm not being a little cannibal. I won't stand a cannibalism on this podcast. Unless it's cannibalism and not <laughs> cannibalism. <laughs> so would that be cannibalismism? <laughs> no. Because if it, you're a cannibalist, right? Because you engage yeah. in cannibalism. Because, mm. you know, you don't like people who engage in cannibalism. It all yeah, makes perfect so, sense. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you've got a cut piece of DNA. Um, so you you obviously need to you need to add something that's going to sort the DNA out, DNA out, right? You need to add something that's going to fix it. Mm. Yeah. Or just make it into Is junk. That, I guess. Question. Uh, uh, yeah, you need to add that in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't be scared because you're wrong. You don't need to add anything in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see you leading me into that. <laughs> No, so what's really great is that your DNA has already got its own repair mechanisms. So, well, so it just goes like, sloop, okay. puts them together. A so there's, a couple, there's a couple different things that there's a couple different uh, repair methods that your that your sort of DNA has got. Uh, there's uh, non-homologous end joining, which basically just glues yes. the two cuts back together. Uh, ah. That can that can add in errors, so they can add in mistakes, oh dear. mutations. No, not not necessarily oh dear, but bear in mind a mutation can cause a functional gene be a non-functional gene. Because if you've got, if you change the code slightly, that could be one wrong amino acid. One wrong amino acid could wreck the whole structure. Oh, a couple no. wrong amino acids could destroy the whole structure. You know what I mean? That does so, sound like an idea. Yeah, but if you want to do that, let's say you've oh. got a gene that is causing trouble, and you want to oh. stop that gene. Let's say you've got an infect something, uh, an infectious agent um, that has a gene that is particularly troublesome, or that you, you know, let's say you want to maybe. Um, you know, you've got you've got a pathogen, mm. and you know that if you get rid of this one gene, that pathogen is not going to be able to replicate. You knock out that gene, you've knocked ah. out that pathogen. Yeah. It, so, can you accidentally make new genes that you didn't intend to make? I mean, you kind of probably can. It's more likely that you're going to stop genes from working than you're than you are going to okay. make super genes. You know. Ooh. So that's one way, non-homologous end joining. So that can introduce errors. So like you know. The bases can be added or deleted by accident, um, uh, and that can you know sort of mess up a gene. There is also another method. Uh, basically, you fill in you fill in the gap. You fix the you fix the break by filling in the gap with a sequence of nucleotides. So uh, basically, what what happens is your cell will use a short strand of DNA as a template. Mm. Now you can introduce a DNA template. Uh, you can supply you know give the cell a DNA template. And it will use that DNA template to fill in the space. Do you see what we can do here? So you can write genes. You can write new genes. Yeah. We can ah. stop genes. Using, using the sort of CRISPR-Cas9 complex, what we can do is we can just have these two components. We can have a target DNA sequence and uh, the Cas9. Introduce them, into, introduce, introduce them into sort of the cell. And it can either stop a gene from working or add a new gene into a genome. Yeah. It's like a little blank canvas. You can And the beginning of the end of the world has begun. Right. This is okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that's that's not a very that's not a very fun attitude to have. <laughs> no, no, we, will, no we, we, we we can talk about it in just a in just a bit. But I I I, I just want to clear this so that we've got the actual, you know, important science out of the way. Okay. Um essentially what's going on here, bear in mind, I'll just recap that. You've got this sort of immune system mechanism from bacteria that using a specific uh, specific sort of um, strand of DNA, using a specific mm -hmm. sort of section of DNA, will find all the other bits of DNA like that and start chopping them. Yeah. Now what we've, what we've done is we've taken that out of the bacteria and we've managed to make it so that all we need to do is use that, um, that, pro that protein, that like Cas9, CRISPR-Cas9 complex, mm -hmm. add in a bit of DNA that we want to chop and it goes to town and chops that specific part of DNA. We also then can use the cell's own DNA repair mechanism to add in either a new gene or just let it disrupt the gene, any gene that we want. Meaning that using this CRISPR-Cas9 complex, we can add in new genes or stop genes from working. Uh, incredibly simply, uh, really quickly. Uh, uh, whereas before it would have to be sort of highly specific. This is effectively a programmable gene editing technology. Ah, oh, so this is what people mean by gene editing. Yeah. Literally right. editing genes. So that, that's the thing. Like we've been able to edit genes for a while, but it's you need it's it's much more specific. You mm. kind of need to tailor your needs to the specific genes. All you need to do here is find uh like find a twenty stretch bit of code yeah. and whatever gene you want to add in. Is this something that is reasonably 
if, if if we kind of is there a reasonable path that we understand how we may get there to you being able to do this to every cell in your body or is this a thing you have to do before the like a baby starts being developed oh look you have actually led us perfectly into mm-hmm. our current application session yeah so um obviously this is this is something that you might be worried about and the trouble here is that people don't necessarily know a whole lot about this um and a lot of people are sort of r- like riling people up like i genuinely saw an article that said this this doctor is continuing his plot to and i'm like his plot would you say it's his plot <laughs> to cure cancer no just you know use <laughs> use like sort of non uh language that's more neutral but yeah basically people are very worried because they're saying oh this could completely edit the entire like the entirety of the human genome yes and no the way that this works is that it really it will really only affect the cells that you mm. make it affect and then the cells that come from those so if i was to say uh let's let's say i said that i didn't like james's eyes and i said those blue eyes do not look good on you let's give you some green ones okay we've all thought it we have all thought it <laughs> and honestly I, I mean i have been i've been this close this close to spending all the Psy Guys money and just getting those just fixed. editing my jeans. Yeah, yeah. Luke, Luke's had to yeah. stop me a fair few times. It's not very nice. Yeah. Well, I, you should have thought of that. I've taken his bank card away. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't do it. <laughs> That's what you think. You can still get it online, Luke. <laughs> no. Um, I'm changing the login details. <laughs> <laughs> you can spend your own money on ruining James's eyes. Well, fine. I'll just make it in my bedroom. Um so <laughs> What's baffling is that in my bedroom, there likely is the, not necessarily the technological apparatus, but there likely, there likely are bacteria that have this protein in them that, um, that could be used to produce, that could be used to do that. No. So what we could do is let's say I want to change the color of James's eyes. Okay. Right. Um, this is just a silly example, blah, blah, blah. So what I wanted to do is I want to inject, sort of inject him or a, apply the sort of Cas9 specifically to the cells that I want to change. Mm-hmm. Now, I apply it to your eyes. Let's say that changes your eye color. Fantastic. Doesn't ch- doesn't change any of your other cells yeah. at all because it's only been applied to your eyes. It's topical, basically. You know, um, it's it, it, you can make it so that it can spread around the body, but if you apply it directly to a place, it's only going to affect that place. And it's not going to affect your, um, it's not going to affect your your kids. You know, if you, if you were going to have, if you're going to produce children, um, they would still have the genetics that, that you originally had. They would probably still have blue eyes. Ah. Because we're not affecting your germline cells. We're not affecting your, your sex cells. Germline yeah, cells yeah. are sex cells. We're not touching those. We're just touching the cells that are in your eyes. So It's just for me. Yeah. So that is so if when it comes to that, generally fairly safe. It's it's more or less a closed system. However, where you start to get into trouble um with changing the the overall human genome mm. is when you start um messing with embryos because like i said uh, when you when you change a cell you change that cell's genetic code and then all the cells that come from it yes all of their daughter cells and an embryo is is basically a, the beginning of its yeah, life it's, it's the, the start of a whole the smallest amount of cells you're going to get yeah so you need to you change a few of those cells and boom you've changed the entire genome of that person everything after that and all the cell and like also their sex cells are going to have those changes as well. So those yeah. changes are going to be passed down to the offspring. Potentially, obviously. And that's where people are a bit worried. And that's understandable. And I forgot the question that you asked, Luke. I just went on a ramble. But that's... Well, so what I was asking was basically, is this possible to do in a in a now-made person? Or is it some... Because obviously you have to get these CRISPR cells to every cell you want to affect. Well, yeah, but so that's... That de- and so you have answered my question, yes. Yeah, so that- you can apply it topically or you could take it as a pill. Or well, obviously I'm not that technology doesn't it. exist yet, but it may exist one day. I, I mean, if you could take it as a pill, that'd be really cool. I don't... Or an <laughs> injection, yeah. Well, what they've done is they actually, I think they uh, apply, they injected it into rats' tails or they applied it to rats' tails with who had um, HIV in all of their body cells and actually it decreased it by, I think, about... 40 percent 40 or 50 percent their tails of wow. hiv no as in like it it, it spread it, it spread beyond just their tails uh, oh, i don't I've not, right. into, I've not looked into this entirely yeah but um i i did i did that did come up in my research um, on this so you could affect more areas of the body there this is the issue so um okay i'll skip i'll skip ahead to where am i looking at uh cystic fibrosis right so we know what cystic fibrosis is 
mm-hmm. when you've got mucus in your lungs, right? Or in your airways? Yeah, well, I mean, it's yeah. not just... Nece- it, I think the biggest issue is your lungs, but you can have it in any sort of mucosal membrane yeah. in your body. So you you can use gene editing. A lot of times, I think cystic fibrosis can be caused by an error to a single gene. So conceivably, you could um, use, this, use this technology to edit that gene to be functional. Mm-hmm. Um, in which case you then, the difficulty though, is that you then need to apply that to sort of all the cells in the lung. And if you've also got it in your pancreas, then you, your pancreas isn't sorted yet, you know, cause it's just yeah. in your lungs. Now that's the difficulty because you know, there's, there are, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of mucus in your lungs. It's difficult to get to. And that's kind of what I think, uh, scientists are working on right now in terms of cystic fibrosis. They're working on sort of gene delivery methods so they can deliver that, uh, deliver that sort of ther- that gene therapy to the correct cells, but um, yeah, I mean, like conceivably, this mm. is some this is absolutely something you can do in a fully grown living person. The difficulty is less. I mean, I suppose from from what I've read, and this is not just me saying. It seems to me, <laughs> from what I've read, from what people seem to be saying, is that the difficulty with some things is generally the delivery method rather than. Because you edit someone's genome, it's edited. You, you've you've done it. The, the, like, you know, it will. The proteins that are produced from then on will be the edited proteins. Mm. It's yeah, literally trying to get it to the cells that you need to get it to. Um, and and that's the issue with sort of um, that's the issue with uh, cystic fibrosis. Now there are some other issues with it, which I'll which I'll get to in a second. I do just want to talk a little bit about. Uh, a little bit about the positives first. Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> a little bit. Um, well, sure. it, it, it leads into it much easier. So the first trial of um, CRISPR in humans took place in China in 2016, I've read. Um, and this basically, this they, they put gene edited cells into a lung cancer patient. Um, and there's been some more trials in China. Um, they also um, have, uh, you know, use gene editing on people with sickle cell disease, mm. uh, which was basically sickle cell disease. You've got cells that your blood cells become sickle shaped and they, it, that's bad because Ooh. they can't carry as much oxygen and also they get clogged up um, in your um, blood vessels, oh. essentially. Um, and so that's not very good for you. You don't want that. But uh, what they found is that uh, apparently, I think that um, they, they were able to sort of replace sort of the cells that produce more blood cells with um well change the the genes of the cells that produce more blood cells uh, to ones that were able to produce normal hemoglobin normal Mm. blood cells so with that they were you know they edited their genes so that they could start producing normal blood cells and they were fine Mm. they don't have the sickle cell disease anymore um and this is the thing you can actually sort of cure sickle cell disease if you have a bone marrow transplant you could potentially cure it. So basically, all you need to do is replace all of those, all of the, the cells that produce the broken um, blood cells with cells that produce, you know, normal blood cells. And here's the thing: how different is just editing someone's genome to give them uh, mm. a, a functional gene to transplanting someone else's um, functional cells into into another person? There's not there's not a huge amount of difference. You're getting smaller there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're 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 going just into the DNA and changing that as opposed to stuffing in some other cells. But f- the fundamentally, the sort of outcome is the same. Yes, which I which I find really interesting because we we have issues with sort of genetic engineering uh, when we don't have issues with other forms of changing genes. So let's say dogs. We're generally all fine with dogs, right? Mm. I'm very fine with dogs. Their genes are messed <laughs> up, bro. We like we haven't okay. We haven't speci- we haven't specifically edited dogs genes but we have selectively bred them yeah and altered their genetics that way the same with most of the food pretty much we, the same thing yeah the same with most of the food we eat and i don't just mean like you know uh, i don't just mean um sort of uh vegetables you know we've bred cattle to have more meat and then we started genetically yeah. engineering them and people see genetic engineering as an issue because it's it's not natural but then selective sort of selective breeding or um sort of artificial selection isn't really natural either this is just a more sort of direct step you know yeah i mean and to be honest i will say the 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 main sort of issue with this the main issue with crispr is the sort of un the unintended changes as i said it um will change specific genes but 
if you let's say you you can have unintended changes you can have the the non-target uh, non-targets being changed which could cause unforeseen issues so that's again you need to be certain that that 20 that sort of 20 base pair long code is unique and if it's not then it can cause issues if it starts cutting up other bits that can cause more issues mm. and that's basically that is an issue that's not that's not something just to sort of like oh whatever that would never happen because it can and it does happen which is what a lot of the sort of testing is looking into sort mm. of perfecting that sort of process so that it it doesn't have as many mistakes as it as it potentially could so it definitely is something to you know be able and to be i guess cautious of uh but it's it, you know this is a really powerful technology and it could do a lot of good but it could also be used be used very poorly mm. i think when we were talking about this before in our in our eugenics episode um a, a lot of the comments were saying that this is eugenics and that is eugenics and I, I think we need to be careful about what we label as eugenics because just because something can be used as a tool by eugenicists it doesn't mean that the existence of the thing itself is eugenics you know yeah obviously there's a you could say there's a slippery slope from yeah. okay let's fix let's like okay if the tool fix, exists yeah, 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 yeah. It's but, be yeah you could say that just not like just sexual selection is eugenics by that logic yeah and like making a choice of who you mate with is eugenics well by that logic this is the thing i mean we already do prenatal screening which people will say is eugenics and to be honest i mm. i mean i'm I, I don't really think there's much of an argument there i mean i, I, I don't know if there's i don't know how you could say there's much, there, the argument you could give is that it uh, when it's personal choice um and not being enforced by a sort of state or anything like that then it's less it's you can there's less of a is it is it personal choice like if you had a prenatal screening and um your your baby was found to have loads of things that they're screening for you can still choose to go through that and they're not going to try and nudge you so at if all they pre, if you have a if you have a prenatal uh, if you have a prenatal yeah prenatal screening for down syndrome um you can so 90 i think 90 percent in europe of of pregnancies that are screened for down syndrome and turn out to have down syndrome are terminated but you can choose to you can choose to carry to full term and, that, and my point is, my point is not. I'm not saying that that is good or bad. Mm. Like I, I'm not. I'm sort of not giving. I'm. I'm not giving a sort of stance on that. What I'm only bringing it up um, to point out that we saying that genetic engineering is sort of bad and will lead us down this dark path. Um, we're already there. If you, if you, if you feel right, like, you know. Yeah. I mean, we, we're. If you want to extrapolate from a piece of technology that we're already doing things that can be extrapolated from yes and and so th my point there is that um and that's not to say oh we should just forget about it we need to be careful about how we use this absolutely but mm. looking at technology as the devil is dangerous and saying we we should ban this is also dangerous i i just think that w when we look at these when we look at this te technology like this we should look at it as it is a, a tool that we can use to do either great good, good or, or great harm yeah and because just because someone can use a tool to do great harm it doesn't mean that it should the that, tool shouldn't exist yeah the tool shouldn't exist yeah N like sort of nuclear energy uh, as yeah. an example it can do incredible harm incredible but also it's relatively clean energy mm. um and it's it and relatively safe as well Chern chernobyl notwithstanding but it, it, it's <laughs> like it, it, it is relatively safe so you know, it, this is the thing with, with sort of technology and science. And th there is the whole sort of Jurassic Park thing of like, you know, you you were too preoccupied with uh, whether you could, that you didn't stop to think of whether you should. And yeah, but th this technology exists and burying our heads in the sand and saying that it shouldn't exist isn't going to stop that. Uh, you mm. you want to have a hand on the wheel and be careful with what we do with it. But Someone's uh, yeah. going to invent it. Exactly. That's, and I mean, it could be someone who's got bad intentions. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, and this is the thing, we, we can't really stop the progress. I don't know where it's gonna lead us. I'm I I don't know. I genuinely don't know. You could you could conceivably create people that have uh certain attributes that are mm. like you could okay, you could write any number of sci fi stories about what could happen. Some of them good, some of them bad, but honestly it's it it's it's a very powerful technology and we we do need to be cautious with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think as long as people are as long as it doesn't become something that is um the way I, I sort of look at it is is um 
we are all the manifestation of our individual genetic code. I'm the manifestation of my genetic code. You're the manifestation of your genetic code. What you do with your own genetic code is basically up to you. Mm. Um, now, as long as we don't have a situation in which it is done against your will or is mandated in law, mm. um, then what you do with your own code is your decision. Um, the code of your child? And well, that, yeah, I mean, that's where, but you, you make the choice of how your child's code turns out by sexual selection. Like, that's the thing mm. that we already do. I don't necessarily agree that, yeah, it's a really hard, it's a really hard one. It's difficult. Um, and this is the thing. Yeah. You, sorry, you say it so long as it's not mandated by law, but ultimately things don't need to be mandated by law to, so, um, okay, uh, let's put, I really don't want to talk about this one, but we have to bring it up anyway. Um, systemic racism. There are no laws um, that sure, there are no yeah. laws that say systemic racism should exist. Mm. Jim Crow laws in the U.S. are uh, mm -hmm. quite, I say, long since passed, but they've passed. Um, and yet, in and yet, systemic racism is still something that genuinely affects people's lives today. Mm. Uh, there are no necessarily. I mean, there are probably some. There there may be some laws. I, I'm not very well versed on it. There are potentially some laws that um, you know are that are sort of ableist and just because but even even though there aren't laws in all aspects of that area that doesn't mean that society isn't sort of set up to be ableist and people aren't inclined to do certain things um because of ableism so for example um the sort of what we're talking about the prenatal screening screening for down syndrome mm. there's no law i mean there in some countries there may be but i'm fairly sure in the uk there is no law to say that if you have if you have a child, if you've basically been screened and you find that your potential child has Down syndrome, there is no no law saying that you must um, terminate that pregnancy. As far as I'm aware, I, I haven't really looked into this, but um, even if there wasn't a law, that that's not to say that people wouldn't be sort of coerced by others into it or um, the culture mm. leads you down that path. Yeah, and that's where I understand where people uh, with certain sort of disabilities or people who see this this as a threat to sort of their culture or community, I can understand the the concern there. And that that's the difficult part because ultimately you want to say that yes, this should be down to personal choice, but it's you it's it's really difficult to extricate extricate personal choice from sort of outside influence. So for mm -hmm. example, I've got uh, I've got one here um of a Russian doctor who is working with um genome uh, sort of embryos of uh from a basically embryos uh, to remove a gene that can cause deafness, a single gene that can cause deafness. Mm -hmm. Now, initially he was working with embryos from a woman who could hear who didn't have the gene uh, that would then cause, you know, her offspring to have, have uh, to be deaf. But um, he, he was basically working to see what the unintended effects would be potentially with messing with those genes. Um, and now he's basically got, I think five couples set up who uh, would potentially want to try the gene editing technique so that they can have a biological child who could hear. And the reason that they wouldn't be able to sort of, you know, do normal sort of screening, which they would, be, if this was another situation, it's because it's a recessive gene. So they both have, they both have uh, two copies of that gene. Right. So they're going to pass that on. So their child is going to be um, deaf. Yeah. And there are at least five couples who, who, you know, want to have a child that's hearing. And, I mean, ultimately, that is their choice, but where is that choice coming from? You know, and it's difficult because ultimately, like, I, I want to believe in a good society. I want to believe that we could have a society where um, we've made things accessible for everyone, and choices that are made are made entirely based on one one's own decision and not based on sort of um, outside forces or ableism or sexism, racism, anything like that. But we're not going to live in that society. So, what do we do? And I don't think there is a simple answer to it, to be perfectly honest. But um, yeah, I'd like to say that it's down to personal choice. But is your personal choice your personal choice? I mean, that is CRISPR Cas9. We've gone on quite a journey. We've, I mean, it's a big, yeah. big episode. We've started from you know uh, how to make a person using genes or DNA from the very beginning, all the way through to you know how we can change those genes using something we've basically stolen from bacteria. Yeah. And kind of the sort of sort of moral and ethical dilemmas that we find ourselves in with that. And how it's going to affect the actual world. 
Yeah, and now that's the and thing. in the future, exactly. Yeah. It, it's like you know, the bottle has been opened. There's Pandora's box, yeah, fully open. And that's the thing. It's difficult. Where, where do we go? And honestly, leave some comments in in the leave some comments. Yeah, leave some comments down below because we genuinely <laughs> want to hear what you guys think. And if you if you disagree with us, honestly, we're we're we genuinely want to know. Um, this is this is something that is. I think we're all kind of. Um, I don't think any of us can really say that we that we have um, a super strong sort of uh, basis for this. We all mm -hmm. kind of have to form our opinions based on what we know. And if you feel like your opinion is different and you want to share with us why that is, please let us know because we genuinely are very open to hearing um, sort of the different takes on this because we can really only have, uh, we can really only have sort of, you know, our own experiences to draw from and, mm -hmm. um, and all the information that we've gathered from that. So definitely leave a comment below on that. But what I want you all to remember, including you at home, everyone, what I want you to remember above all else is that on Sunday, the 15th of November, we are doing a very special celebratory live stream after Sci Guys Live, wherein all of our patrons will have the chance to call in <laughs> and have a chat with us live on air. So if you want to have a chance to come in and talk to us, definitely head up and head up to our Patreon and join that. Patreon.com forward slash Sci Guys. Yep. We can't wait to talk to you. Yep, but even if you're not a patron, don't worry, you'll still be able to watch the live stream and get involved. You just won't be able to call in. So, that's the show, I think. Yay! Yay! Any last words? Hasta la vista, baby. Thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new... <laughs> <laughs> new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment you can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash sci guys or find and contact us at sci guys pod on twitter facebook and instagram I'm not Corey everywhere I am champion everywhere I'm Luke Cutforth everywhere goodbye goodbye <laughs> I hate you guys